Hello and welcome back. Today's video is going to be a quick tutorial on how to install Linux Mint. Now Linux Mint is now currently the most popular version of Linux you can get and we're going to navigate to their website and we're going to go straight to the download section. At time of recording 18.2 Sonya is the current release, however yours may change. But there is four different types of download here, so Cinnamon, Mate, XFCE and KDE. Now these are all desktop environments. What I would recommend if you don't know what you're doing, use Cinnamon, it's going to be the easiest one for you to use and everything is going to be fine from that point. Also Mate isn't a bad choice, just slightly different, this is in a different type of Linux uh, but it's using the Mate desktop. Uh, and then you can go over to XFCE and KDE if you want to, but just use Cinnamon, it's going to be the easiest one for you. Navigate to your country and see who hosts it in your area. There is lots and lots of mirrors. So I'm going to download mine from the University of Kent and my download has started. The next thing we're going to do is download some software called Rufus. Now Rufus we've used multiple times before. Rufus is a fantastic piece of software which lets you put any ISO image or DD image onto a USB stick. And it's such a clean interface and simple to use. We don't have to worry about crazy options or anything, it just does it mostly for you, which is why we use Rufus. So what you're going to do is you want to find a USB stick that you can use for this. So I've got a Mint stick at the top, I've already named it. And we're going to set it to all the defaults. Uh, I'm going to kill the volume label for the time being, but actually it's going to put that back. So create a bootable disk using an ISO image. I'm going to go and find Linux Mint and add it in. So it's already changed everything for me, it's changed the file system, the cluster size, it's added a name for me. Rufus just does it all and what you're about to see as well is Rufus goes one step further. So when I press start it's going to give me two boxes. So it's asking to download some additional stuff as Rufus has realized that different types of SysLinux are not compatible. So what it's going to do is just download a little bit more information for me uh, and then it's going to ask me what I want to do if I want to write it in ISO mode or DD mode because it'll do either one and in reality just stick to ISO mode. You don't have to worry about any of these settings, just stick with the defaults and stick with the recommended. And what this is going to do is going to burn it straight to the USB drive so I don't have to worry about CDs and that time is gone. So let's take that USB stick, plug it in your new machine, and then we can start the installation process. And this is exactly what you see when you start the install process. So what I've done so far is I've booted to the USB stick, and what this is doing is loading into a Linux live CD of Linux Mint. Now what you can do at this point is you can actually try it out. You don't have to start installing Linux Mint yet. You can just use it a little bit, see if you're going to get on with it, uh, and see if the desktop environment is going to be the right one for you. But to start the installation process, so at this point we are sure we want Linux Mint installed, what you want to do is go to the top left here and you have a CD icon. What you're going to do is double click this like you would in a Windows environment and then start the process with your chosen language. I'm going to choose English as this video is English. The first thing it asks is then for internet connectivity. You can set this up later so don't worry about it. And then you can ask it to install third party software for graphics, Wi-Fi, hardware and various other things. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put the Wi-Fi password in so you can continue without it but it's up to you guys. So with the Wi-Fi connected we're going to carry on through the installation process and we're going to allow it to install the third party applications and hardware it's going to need. So we continue on through, we're going to tick this box. Some of it is proprietary, but that's fine, I just want the PC set up. So let's let Linux Mint handle it all the way through. We're then going to wait a little while while it loads through, as it's choosing what to download and what to install. But after a little while, it'll be finished, and we can move on to the next step, which is choosing how we install it. So in this case, this PC has no operating systems at all. If you have a Windows set up on it, it will let you actually dual boot. So you'll be able to use both operating systems, both Linux Mint uh, and Windows, as well as the options for encryption and setting up logical volume management. But don't worry about those two if you're not going to use them. Next, we'll select the actual drive it's going to be installed on. So in this case, I'm putting it on my Samsung SSD 840, just to make sure my Linux boots really, really fast and you can use the advanced partitioning tool if you know what you're doing but you don't have to worry about it, in this case you just choose the partition you're going to do. But we'll stick with the basic, we know what we're doing that way so we don't have to worry about it. Now we're going to switch back to the basic and start the installation process. When you press install it's going to ask you to confirm what you are doing so it's going to confirm all the changes it's going to make and this all looks fine to me so let's continue. What it will do is wipe the entire drive but that's fine, that's what I want. And during the Linux installation, you're actually going to choose how you want to use it. So I'm in the UK, I want English UK keyboard, that's fine. And there is a test area to test it out. 
and you can set your name, your computer's name, username, and you set your password up. So my name is Tom, and my computer's name now has a own name based upon this. Choose a password, you can choose to encrypt your home folder from here. And it won't let you continue without a password, so make sure you set a very, very strong password. So I'll always press the box to require my password to log in. And in this case, I'm going to try out encrypting my home folder as well. What we're going to do is press continue and then this can be left alone for a little while. The installation process has already been running but now it's going to kick itself into high gear. It's just going to carry on through and we can come back when it's all finished. So after a little while, this is the box we've been waiting for. The installation has finished, you can continue testing Linux Mint, but until you restart the computer, any changes you make won't carry on because we're still on the live CD at this point. So what we're going to do is we're going to restart the computer and boot from the SSD I installed it to. What I would recommend you do is you take out the USB drive that you've installed it from, just so you don't accidentally boot to the live CD again, and you boot to the SSD or hard drive, whatever else you've installed it to, and you'll be presented with the login screen. So because I selected the option to always require a password, we have it here, ready and waiting for me. So what I'm going to do is enter my password and we can start using Linux Mint. So now we'll log in and we'll continue setting it up. It brings up this nice dialog box where we can start to install our favourite applications. So the first thing you want to do is go to apps and have a look through of what you're going to need. So your drivers and your apps are going to be the most pressing things you need to look at, as well as some documentation if you want to read a little bit more about it. You have a chat room, forums, all available for Linux Mint. These boxes are actually very, very helpful for new users, so you can just scroll through and see what you're going to need. You have one device that's not working, you choose you a new device driver here, so you just have to press apply changes, and Linux Mint will try and make it work for you. And on the left hand side here you have applications available for you. So you can scroll through all of these, check the featured of what's installed, what's not installed. With a green tick will tell you that it is installed already, so VLC comes as standard. One of the main reasons Linux Mint has become so popular is because it is so easy to use. And because of its media capabilities, you'll have no problem running VLC, Netflix or anything else that you're used to on your normal machine. I hope this video has been helpful for you and you're able to install Linux Mint. Thanks for watching everyone.